I guess I had a little nervousness about this coming to fruition, but it was meant to be. It's always with me leaping the net will appear. I thought about it for a second and said, no, no, it's gonna work. Yes, ma'am, what's up? How are you? I'm fine, how are you? From Laguna to Albuquerque was bad. Like, they, I don't know how many inches of snow they got, but that's the worst I've seen it. So, we're looking forward to you getting here, so be safe, all right? All right, okay. all right, bye-bye. My name is Gwen Cope. I'm the state coordinator for the Partners for Fish and Wildlife Program. I sit in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and that is U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. We're one of the only programs with the authority to work strictly with private landowners, and that's what I've been doing for about 22 years now. You didn't use my Afro pick, did you? What, dear? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this mess <must> with <laughs> No, I didn't. Okay. I used my little funky comb. <laughs> when Gwen called me about this idea, I said, count me in and you can all be my guests at the rectory. I was so excited about it. If you're gonna have interactions with folks and hear their true views and understandings and values and stuff like that. You gotta be one-on-one -on -one with them. So this is for you, it's a early retirement. See, I've heard, well, I've heard to come work for NMACD. I'm gonna retire at the end of the year and I wanted to give something back to New Mexico. And I was thinking, you know, I'd like to have the women representing who really, I thought, are doing a lot of this work in this state and they weren't getting recognized. They all appreciated that. That's why they dropped everything they came out here. They spent three days of their life hanging out with me. <laughs> Not a food here. I wouldn't just bug anybody. I just happen to bug the most powerful women in the state. We've all met each other, but we've never been together in one house before. It's going to be interesting. Yes, thank you. Yes, Thank you. Bravo, bravo. All of these women are part of the land. I think we all get energized just being on the land. I know I have to be outside. So every day we've been going across the landscape, seeing the different things that Tutta has put on her land, and all of those things are pertinent to the future health and welfare of this state. You got water still pumping and we don't have anything on the ground, so that right there is valuable to me. Absolutely. I think they've done a really good job designing this. You have a drinker, but you also have a lot of storage in the same facility, so you don't have to have two different pieces of infrastructure. And you can tell she's got a good well, pretty shallow water by the size of that fan. And you can see the inlet coming in. She's got quite a bit of water. It's a good flow. It's yeah. Really good flow, you know, when women get together, I guess it's a little bit different. We went out on the land and then we come back and eat. You know, we got to talk and, and we never stop talking. We talk continuously. And we're all solution-oriented folks. I sometimes think about, well, what motivated you guys to come in this direction? I mean, I've got my own little crazy story, but, you know, since you're all here, and this is how I learn, what got you started in this stuff? What was your inspiration? There's always something to move us forward. And the way, as strong as all you are, is got to be something really good. So. If you don't mind sharing your story, I, you know, with us. I mean, I mean, I feel. I want to hear yours. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. No, no. I should. I should be last. <laughs> Here's a picture of my mom, and she was a horseman from the day she was born. So, uh, followed in in her footsteps, and my daughters followed in mine. She was really an inspiration, and looked at the future and sustainability and. So it was pretty natural to me to follow in that, a strong female leadership role. There was a need for women in fire, in wildland fire. So it was easy to get on with the Forest Service when I graduated from college and uh, went and fought fire. I enjoyed the trees, but I always found myself looking out to the grasslands. Now, all these grasslands evolved under grazing. Yeah, they did. And they need to be grazed to be healthy. Mm -hmm. But they need to be properly grazed. The land will tell you its story if you give it the chance and the opportunity. I'm seeing green stuff. This is cool season time because yep. it's March. So yep. we need those. We need both components, warm season and cool season. And that's what makes a healthy graze, makes a healthy cows. Yep. And then we got good food. 
sometimes we get pretty rigid about how we think people ought to do things. We make laws and regulations. People need to remember land is a living thing. I brought a little photo I thought I'd share with you all. Let's see here. This was, this was growing up kind of wild. That's me pulling my siblings in a wagon. <laughs> a little wild weed. And this was when I was like, this is who I am. I knew right then that was what, who I was and what I wanted to be. As I got older, there was a logging company that came through. And all I see is the place I love has been transformed. And I decided right then I did not like that. I really thought I might have a career doing more sort of environmental journalism, that kind of thing. And then it turned out by chance when I was in my 20s, a friend of mine bought a ranch. I ran it for 16 years as ranch manager and realized within minutes <laughs> that it was a really big job. We wanted to restore ecological health, we wanted to restore wildlife, but we also wanted to figure out how could you make a living on a place because we knew future generations would need to make a living in a way that didn't hurt the ecology and the watershed. Before long, I was out there overseeing big forestry logging operations, understood the need for that active forest management, because until you've lived and worked on a piece of land, it's hard to understand. What I've learned is that what's really important is relationships, and that's how you get things done. There's only, like, less than 2% now, people in agriculture trying to feed the world. And we're expected to, to feed a lot of people by 2050. So it's gonna take all of us working together. These ladies are all from different backgrounds, different upbringings, as we have this, this line between us, which is land, keeping people on the land, supporting the land owners, because once we lose them, we just can't get them back. Well, I think the climate crisis is the greatest challenge everyone's facing right now. And I think we have to do everything we can to mitigate in any way possible. And I think conservation is probably at the top of the list for that being effective. You know, we've heard some sort of different views here around the whole carbon issue and carbon accrual in the soils. I'm still very hopeful from the work of scientists that I have seen that even in the Southwest, there is potentially a big difference here. That where ranchers do the kind of grazing that you are doing, that you can accrue two to three tons, and I mean metric tons, of soil carbon per hectare per year. And when you add that up, that is a lot. It's a lot. Well, I came across my first uh, 4-H oh, record no. book. <laughs> Yep, 10 years old. Like, there wasn't anyone who was going to be able to step up. And so we faced the hard reality of the sale of the ranch. And happily, it went well. I'm pleased with the new owners, and my family is still intact. Being on the land was my inspiration. There's a love affair with the land in my heart, and it's always been that way. I'm seventh generation on this land. My family came here about 200 years ago, and what they went through to keep the ranch together is beyond anyone's comprehension. But I guess now my goal in life is to keep the land in the family. We do not inherit the land. We borrow it from our children. In uh, 2021, we are the first recipients of the Aldo Leopold Conservation Award, which I say with great humility and gratitude. This is Blanche Johnson, who passed away in September of 2020. And with her Star Wars hair, that was back in, I guess it'd be the 60s, 70s, because I was born in 56. Though I am a woman, and I was raised by a strong woman, I am not a native New Mexican. I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. And every summer, as soon as we got out of school, they put us in the car and they take us down south to the land. Papa was a sharecropper, so mother said she wasn't gonna work in the field because the cotton hurt her hands, yeah? yeah? So mother 
cooked. You know, she tried to keep me in little dresses and stuff like that, but I would tear them things to shreds because I was going over fences. Mother gave up. She said, you're going to be a wild animal. We're going to let you be a wild animal. <laughs> so we drive down to Tennessee every summer, and that's when my affair with horses began. So they catch me at the end of the summer because they had to catch me and put me back in the car and bring me back up to school. But this woman, I mean, I mean, I, I owe everything to her. I mean, she did bring me into this world, but she taught me no matter what I want to do. <clears throat> it's a recent loss, folks. Um, <clears throat> I can do it. And so even though I'm doing this kind of work, in this kind of situation. A lot of folks have a different persuasion than myself. But mother said, you can do anything you want to do. This land, these people are important. You just need to follow your heart. So that's why I'm sitting here in front of you doing stuff that's probably not even, I don't know, probably most folks wouldn't even consider a person like myself doing. But I'm damn good at it because she was behind me. And she's still behind me. Okay, so but that's my little story on this stuff here. You took time out of your life to come up here and hang with me with this little crazy vision that I had. And uh, all I can say, I think it's been very successful. I got to know each of you better. And I already thought you were my heroes and now you're just more heroes. Salute, right. salute, salute. Thank you. Thank you. You've been delightful. You've made my year. Yes, ma'am. This is a celebration of all the work that she's done, the legacy that she's left, the friendship she's made, and the joy she's brought to everyone that knows her. You know, you have people that are leaders and you have people that are inspirers, and she's both. I don't know what to do with this. I just... We'll just eat it. <laughs> I am truly blessed. I, I just took a chance on this, and it just turned out amazing. But these five women, all different thought processes, but we all come to the same conclusion. It's about these lands and these people. There's a lot more people out here to care about the land than most people realize, but sometimes they don't get that voice, so we've gotta pass this on.